All right. Everyone's in. Yep. All right. Good evening, folks. You are at the Board of Selectmen's meeting for June 14th, 2021 at 6 p.m. In pursuant of the Governor Baker's March 12, 2020, under suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A-18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the select board will be conducted via a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with the right and or requirement to attend, this meeting can be found at the office of the AG on their webpage. Town will persevere to use conference call capabilities regularly for other parties to listen in and participate accordingly. If not possible, we will post on the town's website an audio recording as soon as possible after the meeting. In attendance tonight is Joe Didi, Select Chair, Vice Chairman Russell Fox, the Clerk, Mr. Mobley, Chief Administrative Officer, Carl J. Steinhardt, Administrative Assistant Acting is Robin Solak. We're going to start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Fox, can you start us off in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes, sir, okay. since it's Flag Day. Thank you. I pledge allegiance, allegiance. to the flag, the flag. of the United States of America. America. And to the republic, the republic for which it stands, which one, is, nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. All right. So first up, folks, is public comment. And the way we do it in this town, the way we've been doing it, is if you're not on the agenda, you are allowed under public comment to say a few words. At this point, we don't really talk back. We take it under review for possible future action. And since there's quite a few folks on tonight, I would like to limit it to three or four minutes if possible. I would appreciate that. So we can get through everybody and continue on with our meeting. And we do have a planned executive session this evening. So I can't run late on that. And my understanding also, it's my first weekend as a uh, weekday as chair. So bear with me. Uh, we have a chat room where I think you can post your name and address and say you would have a question. And from there, I will pull you up for public comment with your name if that makes sense. So who would like to be first on your public comment? Hello, I'm, I'm Cynthia Marshall. Hi, Cindy, could you put your name and address please under the chat button so we'll have it for our record? I would appreciate oh, that. Okay, can I do that after Doug? Cause I'm not that tech savvy here. <laughs> yeah, okay, I understand And I'm Joe, I'm not Doug. Oh, but yes. Joe. Yes, okay. how are you? So go right ahead, Cindy. Okay, Joe. Um, no, um, my, well, I know you can't answer, but um, my comment, of course, has to do with the Carvana facility here in town. And one of the biggest questions that I have been getting asked is when was the uh, project first proposed to, to the town of Southwick? Um, and, uh, you know, there's, you know, I'm sure, you know, there's an awful lot of people that are wanting a, uh, an in-person me meeting. And I know the state is still, um, Governor Baker still has the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, until tomorrow, uh, on, um, in place for in-person, uh, town meetings and things. But uh, even if that's not listed, would there be a possibility of having an in-person meeting, at least for the last, if, if not with the select board, but with the planning board, their next meeting on this of uh, Carvana on June 29th. So that's my comments there. And I'll turn it over to anybody else who wants to make some comments here. Joe, you're on mute. Sorry about that. I see I have Joanne LeBlanc next. Nope. Anyone else like to make a comment? Um, I'm sorry. Kevin. Yes. 
Hi, good afternoon. I apologize. I'm I'm about as tech savvy as Cindy says she is. So <laughs> I will get my name in there. I, I live in Daring Lane. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate what Cindy was saying. Um, we're been discussing this issue, the Carvana issue, with several people in town, and my wife and I have been deeply involved. And we would like to get the opportunity to be in person at this meeting. I think it's critical. And um, without talking too much about Facebook, we did have a page we set up, and I, I can show you the numbers of people that have reached out, looked at it, co corresponded to us. So there's a lot of people in town with a lot of concerns. And I think having the ability to do an in-person meeting would be critical. I think a great service to the people of the town. And that's really, I just wanna, like I said, support what Cindy's saying and, and do everything we can to make it happen. All right, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. I only can see one page and there's three. So is there anyone else? Probably can't see your hand waving, so just give me your first name and we'll start. All right, so no one else has a public comment. Is Diana Gala? Diane Gale. Hello, Diane. Go Hi. Ahead. Um, for those of us that aren't really up on how the process works. I think many would like to know how this proceeds and how a final vote is done. Do the townspeople get to have a vote on this? This is monumental for the town. That's my question. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Ann, go ahead. Hello. Hello, Ann. Hello. Hello, this is, it says Kim, but this is Ann Griskus. Six okay, thank you. Street, six Second Street here in town. Um, i just like to say I would like to have an in-person public meeting on this Carvana issue. Um, I am... Uh, a oh, resident for about 15 years here, and I don't believe that uh, this a business of this magnitude should just be voted in by the uh, the board members. I think that the public should be able to speak either in favor or against either way. Um, doing it via Zoom is very difficult, especially for many of us who aren't exactly tech savvy. <laughs> so uh, I would just like that uh, to be written in the record that. Uh, I would prefer to have an in-person meeting with the board. Okay, thank you, Ann. Let's see, looks like Amber Bach, you're next. Amber? Yep, I unmuted myself. Hi, okay. so I think with the concern with everybody having um, over this and I'm, I'm neutral on it at the current moment, but I think when we moved here 20 years ago, we looked at one of the master plans that was put in place, um, I believe about years ago. And so I was thinking that that was a little bit plated and it might be time for the selectmen and maybe to kind of rally up a new group and try and get a new master plan for the future, just to kind of see where this town is headed. Um, just an idea. Okay, thank you, Amber. I appreciate You're welcome. That. Anyone else? Um, Scott? You're muted, Scott. Well, Kelly's muted. I don't know what's going on. Sorry, there we go. Is that better now? <laughs> yes, thank you, Scott. You're welcome, Joe. Hey, uh, this is Scott here. It's Leonard Perus from 25 Castle Street. Um, I just have a question. Uh, what kind of tax revenue would this bring in for the town? What kind of revenue would it bring in? Um, and uh, that would be it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Go. Am I on the list? There's no list, apparently. No one's no one's logging in with their name. Like oh, there's, there's a, I think I you got everybody, it. Joe. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Whoever's on there, I got. I so, don't. I don't know how to make um, a little pop up with my name. I am okay. also tech unsavvy over here, um, so I give do. Me, give me your name and address for the record, please. Sure. My name is Brandy Devino. 
Um, and you can put me down for 305 College Highway in Southwick. Thank you. And my question is, um, what kind of um, tax breaks are is Carvana getting from both the town and the state? Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I also would like to see um, a public meeting on the 29th. All righty. Anyone else? Carol Ann Gothier here. Hello, Carol. What's your address? Six Island Pond Road. Thank you, Carol. I'd like to know exactly what the impact will be on the infrastructure and the water table, the wildlife, uh, the traffic. Uh, a major concern is also uh, if Route 57 is taken, not just College Highway, that's where our schools are and our teenage drivers. Um, I would also like this to go to public forum. Okay, Carol, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, this is John Lacey, 28 Tannery Road. How are you? Good, John, thank you. Uh, my concern is I just uh, moved in uh, no less than nine months ago. Um, I find out now that uh, Carvana is a possibility uh, to be right down the road. Now, if I had known this prior to purchasing my house, a, a fairly sizable investment, uh, there is no way I would have even considered purchasing my home. Now, I understand that Southwest is going to be a, uh, a connecting route so that these trucks can go past all day long. Uh, two two thousand five hundred some plus uh, cars a day. The noise, the amount of uh, pollutants. I, it, this is almost comical. Uh, mm -hmm. After being uh, in this house for only nine months, to have this proposal come up is is just absurd. I mean, in such a small town, it's the reason why I moved to this town was to get away from nonsense like this. So I don't know what's going on. I believe that people need to vote on this. Uh, I don't believe that this should be just a, a, a five person individual thing. This should be a uh, go down to the uh, town's people to vote because this is affecting everybody on Tannery, everybody on uh, College Highway, everybody uh, surrounding towns. Uh, this is going to affect, I, I don't think people get the concept of 70 acres. There, there, is, there are people uh, confusing a used car lot with 70 acres. I don't think that people absolutely uh, comprehend the size of this or the amount of traffic it's going to produce. And as somebody who just purchased this home, I absolutely think it's just insane. Um, so that's my concern. I think this absolutely needs to be voted on by the people. Uh, five individuals, I think it's just a little bit too big um, for five individuals to vote on. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, hello? Oh, sorry. Yep, go ahead, Peter. Or no. Hi, uh, uh, Peter Kelly, 40 Woodside Circle. Yes. Uh, I, I just want to reiterate that, that I really think that, uh, again, with the magnitude of this project, or uh, that this should really be, be left up to the, to the public to vote on and not just the board. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Ron, Ron I saw your hand. Yes, uh, I, I agree. I think it's a huge project, and I've been hearing all kinds of things from everybody and really don't know what's true, what's not true. Um, and a lot of us are very busy and trying to get information out. Uh, so a, a public meeting would be a great benefit. And my concern is the huge impact on the town's infrastructure. And it, from what I'm hearing, and I don't know all of it if it's true or not, it's just that it sounds like an enormous thing that really the public should have a decision on. Thank you. And your address for the record, Ron? It's 195 Mort Vining Road. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Nancy Braska, 12 Woodside Road. Thank you. I agree with everything everybody just said. We should have a public meeting and we should vote on this. 
This is a huge, huge undertaking for the residents in Southwick. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. Um, Calman Kagan from 12 Gagan. Uh, as uh, I'm a huge proponent of like private property rights. I think that's very important. Um, you should be able to do what you want or sell to whoever you want. Generally speaking, uh, just when it comes to something of this magnitude, I think that uh, because it's going to affect the entire town and the surrounding areas uh, to um, this type of degree, uh, as well as um, uh, water rights and, and all this other stuff, um, I think that it definitely uh, merits more deliberation and consideration from uh, the entire community. Thank you. Have a good night. night. Stacy, did you have something to say? Oh, no, that, that was me. I'm just using my West phone. Oh, sorry. Sorry. About that. sorry. All right. Have a good night. All right. Uh, sh Sherry? Sherry? Yeah, Sherry Benoit, 268 South Long Yard Road. Thank you. Um, I, too, I would really like a chance for all of us to have more information about this project. And one of my husband's and my concerns is we understand that they're applying for a special permit in a restricted industrial zone. But one of our concerns is um, that if it gets approved for one thing, that that would set a precedent for future projects. You know, we're looking around, our daughter works for Calabrese Farms, Tommy and Don are getting older, who knows if their kids are gonna take that farm over, they own a lot of land. There's still quite a bit of open land in Southwick and that's why you know, I grew up in this town. That's why a lot of people move here. That's why we stay here. We, you know, I think most of us who live here love the, the more rural um, place to live. We understand that it was a farm town, the land gets sold and all of that. But so one of our concerns with the vote that will come up about Carvana is, will that then, are we gonna be looking at, you know, Walmart on the Calabrese land eventually or whatever? So I'm pretty concerned about the future of the town as someone else said, I'd like to see it stay as rural, as small town USA as it possibly can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, do I have it? This is Jason Jaguar of uh, 10 Cedar Street. I also agree that there should be an in-person meeting and that we should uh, be able to vote on this. Okay, thank you, Jason. Anyone else? Hello. Eric or Aaron Devenau? Yeah, this is Barry Devenau, uh, 301 College Highway. Thank you. And uh, I think this is a huge impact on this town and uh, not necessarily something that I want. And I think that there should be a public meeting on this and uh, should definitely be voted upon by the town's people as whether this happens or not. All right, thank you. Um, and this is Aaron Devenow, also 301 College Highway. Um, I know one of the things that I'm sure they use to sell this to the town with is jobs coming in. And I would also like to see information on the um, pay rates and quality of jobs, as well as um, how many jobs will be hired within their town. Okay, thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Going once, going twice. Joe, I'll go quick. Sarah Hedges here. Thank you, Sarah. Address? Uh, 27 Lauren Lane, Southwick, Mass. So we've been residents here for 10 years. We absolutely love Southwick and we very much appreciate the planning board and the selectmen. We're on here tonight just to express concerns about the traffic. Um, we totally appreciate that property owners have rights to sell to whom they choose, but there are certainly concerns in our house about Carvana coming to Southwick. It's not the reason we purchased in Southwick. We do love this town and we appreciate that some of this land has been used to build homes like ours, but um, there's just certainly concern about the amount of tractor trailers and traffic on that road. We love going to the businesses that are there today. We frequently shop 
at these places, but um, Carvana just doesn't seem to be adding the value that we see from other businesses on the road. So here to learn more, um, but I did want to comment that we have concerns as well. Thank you, sir. Anyone else have a public comment? No, okay, so I got one more up here. Peter Kelly, go ahead. And then we're gonna continue on with our agenda. Yeah, I, yeah I'd, I'd like to see um, uh, some information regarding population impact for the town. I know with um, other distribution centers around the country with Carvana, um, I, would, I would assume there, there, there may be information regarding that, but I, I'd like to see something around uh, yeah, how the population fluctuated with these other distribution centers once uh, uh, one of the centers was put in. Okay, thank if you. possible, thank you. Yep. All right, that looks like that's all I have in front of me. And um, like I said, we don't really respond. I do notice some planning board members on here. So I'm sure they heard you all loud and clear. We heard you loud and clear also. So that being said, we're gonna move on with the rest of our meeting. Thank you. Okay, so next up will be the payable, uh, I'm sorry, payable payroll and minutes, acknowledged payroll warrant 2127 dated 6-8-2021 and the amount of $293,493.59. And then I need a motion for the minutes of 6-7-21. Plus Fox will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe Didi, aye. Chris Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Okay. All right, so that's all I have there. So next I have up is a proclamation for May related to, uh, Douglas, you can say that, Apraxia Awareness Day? Apraxia. Apraxia, all right. So Doug, this was part of our packet a while back and unfortunately with the uh, craziness of life, we didn't get to it in time. You're too kind, Mr. Chairman, I dropped the ball. The young lady uh, approached me. Um, I believe she has a daughter that, that has this and asked if we would consider this and with everything else that was going on, um, I dropped the ball and didn't send it to the CAO to put on the agenda. So when she reached out to me again, I asked if through, through the CAO, if you would check with the chair to carry this and kind of do a backdated proclamation, if you would, for May 14th. Sure. Would you like to read it? If you would like, sir. I would like you to, yes. So this would be a proclamation if voted by the Board of Selectmen that whereas May 14th marks Apraxia Awareness Day, during which awareness will be raised through Massachusetts about childhood apraxia of speech an extremely challenging speech disorder that affects one in a thousand children. And whereas childhood apraxia of speech causes children to have significant difficulty learning to speak and is among the most severe speech deficits in children. And whereas the act of learning to speak comes effortlessly to most children, those with apraxia require early appropriate and intensive speech therapy often for many years to learn to speak and whereas without appropriate speech therapy intervention, children with apraxia will have diminished communication skills, but are also placed at high risk for secondary impacts in reading, writing, spelling, and other school related skills. And whereas that such primary and secondary impacts diminish future independence and employment opportunities and challenge the ability to become productive contributing residents, if not resolved, improved, and Whereas public awareness about childhood apraxia of speech in Massachusetts is essential for families and children with this neurological disorder and the professionals who support them to achieve the needed services for those learning to use their own voice. And whereas our great respect goes to these children as well as their families for their effort, determination and resilience in the face of such obstacles. Therefore, be it resolved that I that we would proclaim May 14th, 2021 as Apraxia Awareness Day in the town of Southwick and encourage residents to work within their communities to increase awareness and understanding of childhood apraxia of speech. So moved, Doug Moglin. Russ Fox will second that proclamation, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor, Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, next up is approved 
Chapter 61A, right of first refusal for Rad Willowitz for parcel book 5216, page 61, map 66, parcel 003-000-000-000, and map 50, parcel 002-000-000. So I believe that is also Yep, that's a simple way of saying it. All right, so what is our theory with this? You need a motion to to decline our right of first refusal. Russ Fox will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe DD, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right, authorize chairperson to approve any necessary year-end thin time reserve request for municipal modernization account transfers. Oof. Russ Fox will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Doug Mogan will second the motion, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor, Joe Beatty, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right. Next up, we'll vote to apply for and accept federal ARPA funds. Ms. Fox will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Joe Doug Dede. Mogan will second the motion. I'm so used to doing that. I'll get all those <laughs> in favor. Joe DD, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right. PBP, PBPC invoice number 14 in the amount of 2300 Sixty-three dollars and sixty-three cents. Fox will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All righty. This is to do with the rehab and septic systems. So Joe Didi will. Um, I'm so sorry, Joe Didi's. Um, what am I supposed to say? Yes or no? Yes, Joe Didi. <laughs> that motion, right? So did you approve? So yes for Joe Dede. All right. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right. I started reading the paper. But threw me off. All right. FY22, heavy equipment service bids. Is our DPW director on? He's here. Hey, Joe. How are you today? Well, you see me at my worst this morning, so I'm doing much better. Um, Good. So, uh, you want me to explain? Please do. So, as you know, we go out to uh, we have uh, contracts for annual uh, services. Uh, we um, we have one contract that's a little unique from the others. This is a heavy heavy equipment rental contract. We uh, in the past we have uh, worked with Crestview Construction on for this contract. Uh, we opened bids about two years ago. Uh, for a new contract and the way that bid was a setup, it was a setup for uh, potential for two option years to renew, uh, which would make it a three-year contract. So last year, uh, we voted to renew the contract for a year two, and we are looking to, uh, for the same, rec make, same recommendation to renew that contract for a year three. Crestview is not looking to make any changes to their pricing that they have in place for the past two years. And as you know, we have several contracts, uh, several projects that are under construction we want to make sure we're uh, continuing make, making uh, keeping those products moving forward under this contract. Okay. And uh, just so you know, we uh, we did open bids for all the other services last week. I'm going through and uh, tabulating those results and uh, making recommendations. We do have some uh, new vendors this year, so I'm doing my due diligence to make sure uh, just checking qualifications on those vendors. And I will have uh, those that recommendation to you at your next meeting. Wonderful. So I need a motion to approve. Russ Fox will make that motion to uh, accept Crestview on the third year. Uh, I'd happily make the motion to support a local business. Doug Mogan <laughs> will also second the motion and also comment that it's great to do business with a local firm. All right. All those in favor? Joe DD, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Randy, while I got you, how is the construction going? Are we looking okay for the summer? I mean, I know there's yeah. a ton of work out there. Are we, are we keeping up okay? 
we're doing pretty good. We're uh, Tannery Road is actively under construction right now, as you know. Yep. Um, Crestview is going to wrap that up hopefully by the end of the month, and uh, we're looking to have some of that road paved um, uh, later on this summer. We've met with uh, the vendor to uh, coordinate that work already. Um, we had a couple of hiccups on Cedar Street. Uh, we're trying to work through those issues right now. So once Tannery Road is uh, is finished up, at least through Crestview's portion of the project, they're going to jump back over and uh, fix, uh, finish Cedar Street. Wonderful. And I'll be and honest, I, I don't want to jinx myself, but I haven't gotten that many phone calls about potholes. Have we been able to keep up this year for the most part? I think, I think so. You know, we got that new asphalt recycler two years ago, and I think that's really helped us uh, take care of uh, potholes earlier in the season. You know, we can make hot mix, uh, you know, all year long. So it, the ability to, to put that hot mix in the ground, you know, in February, March time frame, where in the past we had to use cold patch, right. uh, I think has really, really helped us uh, keep ahead of the potholes. Great. Well, thank you for your time, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So up next, we have a one-day liquor license for the WIC 238 Promotions LLC, and that will be for 7 10 21. I believe that's for the motocross nationals. Um, I see Lieutenant Landis on. Any issues that we should be aware of, sir? Uh, nothing at this time, uh, Mr. Chairman. The uh, There's still gonna be some COVID restrictions that the AMA is putting on to keep the pits closed for um, to the public. So short of that, everything else I think is gonna be pretty much the same. So. Um, in talking to Mr. Johnson, I'm not really seeing much changes from a logistics standpoint for us. Okay, wonderful. Hey, in the last week, we put those two sergeants on. I have to apologize. I never reached out to you and asked your opinion or any questions. And it was just me being a little rusty from not doing that in a few years. But uh, I do apologize. I should have reached out. I know you don't care, but I felt bad after the fact. No, no, I appreciate it. And uh, certainly, um, you know, I don't think you could have gone wrong with any one of them. We're, we're fortunate, as uh, Mr. Moldlin always says about building our bench. You guys had a good bench to go back to, I think. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. All right, so I need a motion for the one-day permit. Uh, Russ Fox will make that motion for that one-day permit for the national. Doug Moglin will second the motion. All those in favor? Joe Dean will abstain. I actually do some food over there during that national. Russ Fox will aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Thank you. Next up, authorized chairperson, CAO to approve town LPVEC three year electricity supply vendor. Fox will make that motion. Doug Moglin will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogo and I. Thank you. All right. Did I miss anything on the agenda? I don't believe so. I think I have an updated one. Doing great, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So then I have new business. Southwick Firefighters Association turn back of lease premises building. So as you guys know or may not know that the I mean, my version is I think when we built the new fire department years ago, the um, association used that building less, less, and less. And um, I approached them on maybe repurposing that building. And uh, I, I had some great conversations and it appears that they, um, they feel the same way. So it looks like they would like to give it back to the town and then the town will turn around and try to repurpose that for a better cause at this time. So do, Carl, do we need a motion to accept it back? Uh, yeah, we, we have a letter from the, uh, from the association. Yep. We also reviewed the 1965 town meeting vote. And it's clear that the, uh, the, per, uh, the property reverts back to the town of Southwick upon the termination of its use by the association. Okay. So, so you should um, acknowledge the receipt of being informed by the association and take the property back. I would like to uh, um, have that dated as of July 1st, because we're gonna have to work with them to uh, remove every, anything else they have in the building. 
-hmm. And then we'll also have to put it under the town insurance rolls as a uh, part of our insured premises, Mr. Chairman. Understood. All right, so. Can I ask Russ a question? Fox, I'm and, sorry, Mr. Yeah. Fox. May I ask a question? Yes. Carol, is this building is on town land now, correct? That is correct. It was a 1965 lease. So the building was a lease, right? It, right. That what happened? We leased the property. They built the building. So now you're going to take the building back, and of course, you know things will have to be done going forward in the future, and that might involve different uh, uh, purposes of reusing it. So it, it'll have to be brought up to code and all those other things. And if it turns out that we for, uh, end up partnering with a nonprofit or any other organization, then you'll have to um, go to a future town meeting and authorize any agreement uh, going forward with any other entity. Thank you very much. Does that work for you, Doug? Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. So Russ Fox will make a motion to uh, accept the uh, property back. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Wonderful. That's all I see under new business here. Is there any other new business? No. Harold, do you have any new business? Uh, I just wanted to, no, actually it's under old business. It's the first item under old business that you have. It came new as a new email all right thank you all right so we're going to go to old business the select board requesting a joint meeting with dot regarding the construction of the bridge and western right mr. mr chairman we did receive an, an email late this afternoon from the senator's office and they have uh heard back from mass dot up at the northampton district and they are um, suggesting several dates. So I believe you as the lead person, if it's going to be you or Doug or whoever, then I can share those dates with that board member and we can continue on with that process of meeting with them. Mr. Fox seems to get under their skin the best. So I would think Mr. Fox would be the candidate to go to the DOT. Okay. Mr. Chairman, after my last discussions with those people, I think that'd be a great idea. Just putting the right people in the right spots. Thank you. All right. World's famous road, road name change, South of Hill Road to Iron Horse Hill. I don't even know if that's correct. We got to look at the chief. The yes, chief. no, we got Kevin. Kevin and I have clarified the name. And as Kevin knows, we have been um, working with town council on all the procedural um, information that needs to come in terms of holding the hearing um you know the different options that the board has and then how you'll handle your votes and you'll make the decision but for the most part kevin has had contact with the neighbor and uh their representatives and this just seems to be something everybody is look for, uh, looking forward to having a future meeting about okay and is our policy even if the police chief is leaving if he doesn't finish his projects they still stay with him and he doesn't that's correct get, and he doesn't we don't have to pay him right because his deal is correct done yeah so, that's correct it's a going away gift to the new chief <clears throat> that i was afraid of okay <laughs> green energy program and town street can we just mute everyone that doesn't need to be speaking just so we can stop that background music the noise i appreciate it green energy program the town fuel efficient vehicle policy first reading right we we uh um, are awaiting some information that uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission needed from various municipal departments in terms of some of their fleet information. I know I just got Randy's in the other day. I think I got fire. So there's a couple other departments that just have to supply some information uh, to the regional planning agency, and then they can uh, finalize that document along with Mark Rabinsky from Mass DOER's help. And then you'll, you'll be getting that for a future first reading. Okay, thank you. Regional Dispatch Research Option Discussions, IMA with Westfield or Westcom, select a choice. 
Where are we with that? Carl, you want that? Or you want me to take that? Mr. Moglin, I think that's all. Uh, we both can. If, if we, you, know, you want to start out, Doug? Well, we, we did have a meeting with El, uh, Westfield um, Ellen Oak subcommittee last night. I believe we're on the agenda again for this week to kind of finalize things. I have conferred with the chief, the soon to be chief, the fire chief and the lieutenant fire chief. And we are all in agreement that we have an agreement in principle as documented by our attorney and their attorney. Um, there needs to be some minor details around uh, start dates and if it doesn't happen by this date type of date stuff, but it's, you know, fill in the blank stuff. The major um, issues have been significantly negotiated and overcome. Um, and so LNO, I believe once we have, I have a, a meeting tomorrow with our attorney, but I believe once we have those dates isolated, that will be sent from LNO back to city council for their vote. And then I believe then the mayor has to sign it. Um, as well. And then this board would then also take a vote to ratify and sign said agreement as well. And I also believe subject to uh, you gentlemen, um, given the state of where we are with the negotiation with Westfield at this point, and that we have an agreement in principle, that we would be in a position should you choose to take it up, Mr. Chair, to have a motion to uh, rescind the letter of attestation for Westcom. And that's something we should do tonight? Something you could do it whenever you'd like, including tonight. Well, I think we should do it tonight and be done with it. Because even if Westfield fell apart, I don't know if Westcom would be our direction. I, I think I, they're- The worst one it was, but we've all learned a lot in this process. And the issue is right now, Mr. Chairman, is we are in the, the very tail end of a grant cycle and the state didn't, quite like my explanation of please just award us the grant we'll tell you where to send the check so we really oh, need to pick a, <laughs> we need to pick a horse and i believe you know i believe right. that you know the so the chiefs um in total are in favor of a westfield southwick coalition rather than us joining um the out on the pike gang so that's that was the direction that i took from them and that was the direction that they charged me to go and execute so that's where we are so if that yep. that would be the direction we should probably right. follow and that would keep be us an action item yep our in chief needs that as an action item so that he can he can uh, inform westcom and also inform the state 911 agency all righty so i would entertain a motion to take westcom off of this package russ fox will make that motion Doug Moglin will second the motion to re revoke our letter of attestation for Westcom. I appreciate your wording, Doug. All those in favor, Joe Didi, aye. Doug Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. Thank you. All right, next up is the Historic Commission vacancy. Have we gotten anywhere with that? Uh, no, we haven't received any. Um applications yet but for all those people that are on the call tonight we're always looking for people to be on boards and committees and would welcome you um it's I, out of my mouth yes i don't want to speak out of turn i did uh was contacted and i did encourage someone to apply and he told me he's absolutely interested i will get a letter from him but mr davidson um is certainly very interested to take on a role on the on the historical commission wonderful mr chairman i also had two people approach me that would be interested and i have asked them to submit an email or a letter exactly great that's great that's awesome wonderful. isn't there a few spots open on that board i, yes. I believe there is yes okay great thank you russ thank you doug medical building vacancies the west fox memorial medical building by the way Has, russ have you gotten anywhere with that Mr. Chairman, I, I did have a phone conversation with a, another uh, medical or uh, health entity other than uh, Bay State. Uh, we had a, a, a you know a brief conversation, and uh, they told me that they would uh, take that back and, and digest it, and uh, 
I said that this board would be willing to sit down with anybody at any time uh, and work with them uh, in any way to uh, establish some sort of medical facility in the town of Southland. Wonderful. Thank you. Town hall boards and committee meetings, reopening guidelines, update under OML. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, you're aware that last Thursday, the state Senate uh, uh, came up with some legislation on how that would work. And they have sent it to the, um, back to the house, the house was polling its members today. And they were also, um, cause they're trying to reconcile both versions and then they are intending to take a vote tomorrow so that they can get a piece of finished legislation to the governor's desk as soon as possible. So in light of that, we, you know, um, we'll end up just having to go back to the, uh, um, obviously the in-meeting, uh, in-person meetings for the different boards and committees, and, but they'll still have the ability if they want to, to use the Zoom function for other members of the public who could um, also dial in like people are tonight, or, you know, in addition to being able to attend their meetings in person. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm it's sorry. It's not quite a finished issue. So, it's in flux, but, uh, and of course, the timeliness of how this is happening on the legislative process at the state level has been a, a source of consternation for all municipalities in the Commonwealth. Okay, so dumb that down for me. Mr. Chairman. Yes. The governor's order is still in effect and no in-person in 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 attendance is permitted through, and it's up for debate even right now, it's, it's through tomorrow or after tomorrow. So right. we are awaiting that legislation to determine if effective tomorrow or the 16th, we actually would have to pivot and any meeting would have to be in person at town hall, just like it was pre COVID. Okay. However, notice we have the 48 hour posting requirement, right? We're actually over that. Those, those meetings had to be posted Friday. So we're, we actually have to check with council. And I think Carl actually has the answer that we'd have to amend those agendas because you'd be changing the location of the meeting from zoom to in person. And I'd hate for someone to dial in on, you know, a board member to dial in from zoom, and find that they can't participate in a meeting because they have to be a town hall. So hopefully the legislation will be passed and then we can have hybrid. Um, I you know, heard loud and clear from folks earlier during this meeting regarding having meetings in person. Believe me, everybody wants to get there and we're gonna get there. It's just a matter of the how and the when um, based on this legislation that should be signed as early as tomorrow, correct Carl? Well, that that'd be probably the earliest. I don't know how fast. I, I said as early, yeah, as early as tomorrow, maybe later this yeah. week. But um, you know, certainly for meetings yeah. coming up at the end of this month or into next month, um, there will be the opportunity to have them in person. That is correct. And in, in, in uh, labor council uh, from the Dupre Law Group, Kim has already you know given us a guideline on that, and that was sent to the department heads and board secretaries and some of the chairpersons who have to operate their boards and be cognizant of posting requirements as well as working through the treasurer, uh, town clerk, treasure collector's officer. And, and lastly, Carl's communicated that to the boards and commissions. Thank you very much, Carl, because I know that there's, everybody's kind of in a state of asking a lot of questions and we don't want people going off and doing stuff that would put us outside the OML. And then yeah. also to remind boards and commissions, if we do have meetings that are not on Zoom, that they got to dust off their old recorders and stuff because that's still a rule of the put forth by this, this board that all board meetings are to be recorded and turned into the town clerk. So it sounds last like year we've been doing that ourselves with Zoom, right? It's just kind of auto doing it for us, but we got to get back to that if we have to come off of Zoom. So it yeah, sounds I, like, I, go ahead. I mean, the, 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 all the different vi uh, versions of the legislation will still allow some format of remote meetings of which Zoom is one of the platforms. Okay. And hopefully by Wednesday or Thursday this week, we'll have a better understanding of next week. We are hopeful of that. So it sounds like tomorrow's plan, does planning board have a meeting tomorrow? No. No. Well, even better. <laughs> so 
So believe me, <laughs> once <laughs> once <laughs> once we get the signed legislation and all the councils have it and labor and town council and yeah. all the municipal board chairpersons and their um, support staff and secretaries will have it in a timely manner once it comes out. Okay. Good. So it's going in the right direction. We're just a week, we're a week behind. All right. Select board goals and objectives. Yep. You're going to have a draft uh, that you've been given. So at some point you should be reviewing it in um, and submitting the items that you want to see that be amended or edited and please pass them into the office. All righty. Revisiting peddling and soliciting bylaw. Right. Um, based upon last week's meeting, we have made note of your wishes for it to be from 10 in the morning till six at night. And we have also communicated uh, the wishes of you wanting the current bylaw to be amended. And at the same time, we've also asked town council to see whether or not the previous legislation approved at the annual town requiring civil fingerprinting will also be incorporated into that um, as you know to cross-reference the other uh, bylaw that Bobby put forward a few months ago okay and I didn't hear much this week in re or last week in regards to that no but that, so state. that issue is being followed up after your last meeting in your request so I guess I got my point of course all right, 102 Mort Vining, Mort Vining Road dog hearing disposition. How do we end up with that? Well, you, you asked for uh, input from uh, council. Yep. And they did, um, you know, they did start looking into it. And obviously, uh, he got back to, uh, inputs to the uh, chief and I, and obviously the issue that you'd be doing now is another hearing on whether they've violated the executive order, which seems to be the case. And um, so remember the other order was a determination of finding the dog a nuisance, which was done. So you made that order. Now the allegation is that there's a violation of what you had imposed to follow through on that. And the best practice is to have a hearing to determine whether the order has been violated. And if there's a finding of violation, then you would have an option to sanction for that violation, which is a seizure and impoundment of a dog, or you could continue that hearing and attempt to reach a settlement with the parties. So that is your um, response from town council based upon your request of us last week. Wonderful. Thoughts? Well, I, I, Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, think, I think we said that we need to follow through on this. Uh, I think yeah. we need to schedule that hearing so that people know that this is a serious matter. We take it seriously. And, and let's see if we can't, uh, maybe this will be enough to make people uh, understand that. Okay. Carl, let's schedule a hearing. Douglas, what's your thoughts? I concur. I mean, yeah. you have to, we made a decision and, you know, after a duly held public hearing and we have to follow up if, if, especially if there's just a wanton disregard for it, right? I understand if they're moving or whatever, but they could have been more communicative with the ACO and this, this office as to what's going on. Absolutely. And, and dog training, the dog training as specified in the, in the uh, decision was, is irrelevant whether you're moving or staying. Yeah. Yeah, I believe there was some pretty, you know, I, I get the fence could have been expensive. I get if you're moving, you're moving, but if you met us halfway, that's one thing, right? But we Agreed. didn't get that. So, yeah, let's uh, continue on the schedule hearing. Sounds like it'll be in person. <laughs> so they can bring the dog. I was going to say they don't have to bring the dog. Well, Mr. <laughs> Pock won't appreciate it. So no dogs. All right. So up next, August 6th, Southwick Night 
Starfires game at Bullens Field. Friendly reminder, um, purchase tickets online, Doug? Working on that. I'll put it out there. Um, I believe you can get them online from the Starfires. And since okay. we have the most people we've had in attendance at a select board meeting, I'll take this opportunity to you know, throw out a pitch. It's Southwick night at the, the Starfires, Star Fires at Bullens Field in Westfield. And um, they got a special for Southwick residents for tickets and a hot dog and a soda or something. And there'll be some Southwick folks throwing out the first pitch and so on and so forth. So, August 6th, sir. August we want to 6th. make sure we let everybody know. August 6th. Correct. And it'll be, a, you know, just a great night for folks from the town of Southwick to, to get out there and represent at the ball game. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun seeing somebody throw a ball, I can tell you that. As far as a elected official, maybe. Uh, it won't be me. That's for damn sure. Great. Let's get that going. If, if we're wearing helmets, it's not because we're afraid of balls from the field, right? Yes, correct. All right. Appointments for town boards, committees, and emergency management agency. Are we going to continue on with that tonight, or are we going to put that off? I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we have all the information from emergency management, so I think we could knock that off tonight. All right. So I need a motion to uh, reappoint emergency management. I will make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I don't have nope. the names in front of me. You want me to read the roster, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, uh, Eric Car Eric Carroll for emergency management, uh, radio amateur civil emergency service known as Racy's and Community Emergency Response Team, which is CERT. So, and he's a communications officer. So that's what's submitted by Charlie. So if you okay. want to on that one. All right, need a motion? Uh, Russ Fox will make that motion. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe Dede, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Okay, the next one is Pauline Dunlap, Emergency Management. Racy's insert. Can we, together or can, we, can we do this as an omnibus motion? Yeah. yeah, just if you want, I can read the rest of them and then you can read take the names. Vote. That's my fault. Go ahead. Is that okay? You want me to do that? Please. Okay. Next one is Charles Darling, assistant director, and that would be emergency management, Racy's insert. Next one would be Keith Strongren, another assistant director, emergency management, RACES, and CERT. And the final one would be Charles Donlan as director, emergency management, radio amateur, civil emergency service, RACES, and then community emergency response team, CERT. And that is the uh, group of them, sir. Russ Fox will make the motion to approve that group. Doug Mogan will second the motion. All those in favor, Joe D. D. I. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right. Anything else under old business? Mr. Chairman, I, yeah. I'm the clerk, so I go last. If there, everyone else can go first. Okay. Yeah. Arl, anything for new business or old business? Uh, no, we're good right now. Mr. Fox? No, sir. Mr. Mulgrew? Uh, I want to bring an update to the board on the Carvana project. Sure. Um, and I want to try to present some of the facts as I understand them and, and where we are and how we kind of got here. So I was designated back, I believe it was at the end of last year, uh, by this board during a, a public meeting. Uh, meeting of the Board of Selectmen to, to meet with um, a land architect and the state regarding a potential applicant for the Griffin land property as far as a proposed use. Um, we had discussions with that applicant who turned out to be Carvana after a couple of weeks, actually a couple of months of discussion without telling us who it was. Um, as is customary in these types of development projects, when you've got a third party site development firm involved working on behalf of a client. Um, so all that being said, that's kind of how we got to the point where we, um, they came in front of the planning board informally with a, a 
uh, an early draft of their proposal. Um, this board has always felt that, you know, we kind of, we have a need for smart balanced growth in the town of Southwick. Um, you need to have some level of business growth to go along with residential growth um, to promote, you know, a, a stable job base, a stable economic base. Um, this parcel, the Griffin land piece, the former Colboro piece, um, you know, in my 15 years on the planning board prior to coming on to the board of selectmen, you know, this was a parcel that had been identified as, you know, a, a significant future development site, right? We knew that Griffin land was not into in, in the agricultural business for the long term at this point, and that they were looking to either develop themselves or sell this property. Um, and we had talked over the years over, you know, many potential what this might look like. Um, you know, 100 acres or 95 acres is a very significant size singular parcel along, you know, a very busy roadway as far as, you know, traffic count to be attractive to, to a potential applicant. Um, this site, you know, zoned industrial restricted, it's always been zoned uh, industrial restricted. Um, the site is outside of all wetland areas and buffers as, as laid out by Carvana, so it's not subject to conservation jurisdiction. Um, it's outside the wellhead protection area, so it's not subject to any of the provisions of the wellhead district, which kind of hampers us when we have pro you know, potential industrial projects that come in in our industrial park, because most of our industrial park is over the wellhead, um, which has a lot of limitations on the types of businesses that can go in there. Um, this project requires zero variances. It complies in completely with our town zoning code chapter 185. Um, so at this point, the only thing they need is a special permit from the planning board for their use, because it's not, um, I believe the only allowed use in the IR is uh, book binding and printing. Um, that being said, and I'll talk a little more about this, but the planning board has wide jurisdiction to place conditions upon a, per a special permit um, to mitigate potential downsides from a use, um, a proposed use. A uh, little bit about Carvana. Um, they are a Fortune 500 company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It's an online car shopping business. It's a, um, you know, people go online, you can buy a car online and have it delivered to your home. Um, you know, when I first read about it, I was kind of, I had to think about it. It's something, I don't know that I personally is, was comfortable to do originally, um, but, you know, we order everything, a lot of things now online and they just show up at our house. And, you know, things that I would have never thought I would have bought online five years ago, it, it's, it's a no brainer these days. This is a growing market. They've become a significant player in the used car market. I've even spoken to some used car dealers in the area and they sell cars to Carvana. Um, but, you know, as far as this market, it's a growth market, these, this, Carvana is one of, if not the biggest player in the market, and they're interested to, to make Southwick their Northeast regional headquarters for this site. Um, and they're very concerned about scale as far as getting to, um, to be a large player, very similar to what you've seen in some of these other, other online businesses where the, the big two survive and the others, others below it don't. These guys are in that tier now, and they're looking to maintain that. Um, so that kind of leads to the financial piece of this. And I, I heard it during the public comments. I've heard comments out and about in town. Um, so let me, I, I want to relate a phone call that we had um, as part of the discussion. So first of all, and, and, and Carl can attest to this because he was on a couple of the calls and has been answering the state folks. The state folks don't know what to do with themselves. They, the state economic development folks, you know, they're used to, dealing with these types of things and you know basically what do you want or how much do you want there is no state aid on the line for this project they have not asked for or nor are they receiving any state aid they are not receiving nor have they asked for a local tiff or tax incentive financing plan from this from the town of southwick if there had been one that would have had to have go in front of a town meeting so um that's kind of i'll circle back to that piece they're also going to contribute um, hundreds of thousands of dollars, the, the exact amount yet to be determined by the planning board, 
um, towards a mitigation fund for intersection improvements at the intersection of College Highway and Tannery Road. Um, I don't know the exact value of this project completely. So, um, and I've heard numbers anywhere from 40 to $100 million. So I just plugged $50 million in as a ballpark number and used $18 a thousand as um, a, a reasonable tax rate because it's pretty close to where we are right now. That works out to be a, a $900,000 a year in taxes phased in on day one. You know, a typical TIF in the town for the last decade or so that the town has, has done them and approved at town meeting by a, a majority of the voters at a town meeting is usually on a sliding scale over the first 10 years with a 10% uh, step in per year. So you get no taxes the first year, 10% the second year, yada, yada, 100% the 11th year. Also included in that or not included in that $900,000 this site would also be subject to, without exemption, 3% uh, of their taxes to the CPA, which works out on the 900,000, uh, 27 grand. Um, I'd also like to bring up the fact that this parcel three years ago, we, were, we did the same exact dance. I was uh, invited or designated by the Board of Selectmen to be the designee for a potential economic development project on uh, the same piece of property on the Griffin land piece. And we also had designated the, the economic development committee to be a part of that. Uh, that was a hardware distributor that was proposing to con construct 750,000 square feet of building with a uh, special permit permission to 1 million square feet. Um, they were also requesting millions of dollars in state aid. They are also requested the first pass uh, incentive to the town was a 15 plus year uh, tax deal on their local tax. Um, and uh, by the way, they wanted a free building permit, which we found out we can't do under state law. So there's been activity on this site over the years. There's, uh, you know, that other one I think was, would have been a much larger construction footprint. I mean, a million square feet, you can see that down in Windsor where they're building Amazon warehouses. Um, and it would have brought 40 jobs to the town, right? It would, that's, that's their job number. It was just basically a huge warehouse, a lot of truck traffic in and out. Um, but basically very few jobs. It was very, you know, just a big storage warehouse for distribution within the Northeast uh, to hardware stores. So we've seen this, we've been down this road. This is not this is something we've we've worked with in the past. Um, so I guess, you know, how do we take a look at a project like this and how do you consider how to mitigate some of the negative impacts and also answer questions, right? And one of the reasons I asked for time tonight, Mr. Chairman, was to kind of dispel some of, the, some of the rumor and conjecture that's been running around, um, especially around the finance piece, right? But how do you, neg you know, mitigate some of the negative impacts? there are going to be some negative impacts of a project of this size. It, it, it is inevitable, right? Um, but during the planning board hearing, there is time for public comment. The planning board are also a reasonable, reasonable bunch that have been doing this a while and can impose certain conditions on a special permit should they choose to grant one. For example, and these are just examples, the planning board will make up their own mind. No traffic east of Sam West on Tannery Road. Lighting, they do have a lighting plan in their plan. I don't think they actually have gotten to it yet, but you know, there, was, there was some concern about light pollution and spillover of lighting, that can be addressed. Screening at the rail trail, right? The, the parcel does go all the way back now with the addition of, of the other piece that they bought to the rail trail. How could you screen some of that from, from, so it's not as viewable or not viewable from the rail trail? We talked about signalization at Tannery and College Highway and the addition of turn lanes and and so on to improve that uh, intersection. That intersection today has already tripped the threshold and wish you need a signal at that intersection. Carvana adds pressure to that intersection, significant pressure, not gonna minimize, to minimize that. But that intersection has already exceeded the threshold to need, need a light, right? So having somebody come in and contribute to a mitigation fund and then have the town undertake the project with the state to signalize that intersection is gonna benefit all residents in town and anyone using that intersection. And also, um, you know, there's starting, Randy secured a grant 
and as part of the reuse part of the conclusion of work in the sand pit at the end of what is laid out as Hudson Drive today, but where Hudson Drive ends, to con connect Hudson Drive through to Sam West would be a significant bypass for truck traffic through a signalized intersection at Hudson and 57, through to Sam West, right, and, and in, onto Tannery and into Carvana as one use or, or the businesses on Sam West today. Traffic going outbound, same thing. You take pressure off the intersection at the center by, by the plaza and um, at Tannery and, and College Highway. If that traffic can come back through the industrial park, which it's an industrial park. On the water issue, yes, Carvana will be a significant water user. They'll certainly be in the top 10 of our water users in town. We do have the capacity to serve this project as, as well as other development. Um, Chairman Dougherty spoke eloquently during the planning board hearing last week. People are conflating the water ban, which is activated at the state level due to the level of water in, in the Westfield River versus not having water to provide for a project such as this or residential use if this project were to be approved that we would be using water that we can't provide elsewhere. That's not necessarily the case. It's not the case. Um, and the other thing is, you know, water projects, you know, we have one water project ongoing now to, that was an add to the pump project that was just com completed. It was left off due to budget. It was passed in this year's budget um, to fund for this year to bring additional water into the pump station from Westfield down into the station at Jerry Drive. So there is water in the system to support this project. Um, another piece that's been a little bit overlooked is they will be a significant sewer user based on the amount of water coming in. There'll be a lot of water going out. Um, we've been carrying around the sewers on the tax rate, uh, unlike the water, which is financed completely um, by water users, we've been carrying a big chunk of the sewer debt service on the tax rate for years since its inception. You know, we funded the parallel interceptor, we, fought, we, we funded the capacity at the sewer plant. And frankly, every time we brought a project to town meeting for additional sewer construction that would use some of the capacity that we've bought and paid for, it's gotten turned down. This will have a connection to the sewer it will also stub the sewer back to College Highway. So future development in the frontage parcels that are not part of this project will be able to connect to the sanitary sewer uh, in town and to Westfield. It's a huge benefit in my opinion. Um, and frankly, get, get the sewer um, expense onto the sewer retained earnings where it rightly belongs, right? As for the, the water use, significant amount of the water use is for washing cars as they come through their, their processing line. You know, you go buy a new car, it's washed and clean and ready for you to go. Um, as has been explained to me, the car wash is no different than the car washes that you find at, in Westfield um, or at the two in Southwick or three in Southwick, right? They don't strictly just dump water on your car and then send it to the sewer. They reclaim the water in a, in a sedimentation tank, sediment and impurities fall to the bottom. That, and then just like, and also like your septic system, they use fresh water for the final rinse. That water goes to the tank and forces water out, you know, dirty water down into the sewer, which goes to the treatment plant in Westfield, certainly does not get put right into the ground here in Southwick. And as far as their parking lots and storage areas, no different than any other parking lot and storage area being constructed in modern times. Um, these will have, their parking areas will have oil water separators to collect runoff as they come off the parking lot and collect oil and other impurities before they're pushed in, you know, the water itself, clean water is pushed into the, into the infiltration basins and it back into the ground. Um, and then I also heard some talk about fuel Yes, they are going to have an above ground fuel station, not unlike the one right across the street at our own DPW garage. Not unlike, um, you know, it's not gonna be in, in the ground. We just dug out the one at the town of Southwick. Um, I believe the school still has one in ground, but uh, they're in the process of looking at that and, and potentially looking at that. But I just wanted to be clear, that's also for fueling up cars as they leave um, to be sold. And, and, you know, it has to be reviewed and approved by the state and our fire marshal, right? So the plan, it, the, the dynamic on this is 
there hasn't been a lot of hubbub and back and forth in the town on this. They only need a special permit. They're not asking for uh, a TIF, which would have brought it in front of town meeting. They're not asking for um, a variance of, of zero frontage on, on a public way. And, and so they had to go in front of Board of Appeals to get relief from zoning. This product's wholly with, you know, project's wholly within zoning. And, and so the planning board is the venue to hear this. And you've got an elected planning board that's going to, you know, do their due diligence. I've watched the chairman, the vice chair, and the other members in action over the last several months, um, several years actually. Um, but even through a pandemic, conducting contentious public hearings on Zoom, which everyone agrees is not optimal, but that was the rules of the road up till now. Um, they've done a yeoman work. They've taken all the input and acted accordingly within the best interest of the residents in the town. And I think, you know, I, I, I have faith in the planning board in, in, in doing the right thing here as far as the applicant and what, they, what they're proposing, that the use is compatible with the, with, with the land, the, the parcel that they're applying for and within, you know, their right to apply. And they, you know, so your planning board has an application in front of them. They're going to do a great job to hear it, take the input. If they decide to approve it, they'll put the right conditions on it to, to mitigate some of the impact. And, and we go from there. Um, so as the, as the select board designee for this project, right, the only thing I can ask for from this board at this time, because we have Thank you. Um, I know I spoke too long, but you didn't put me on mute. I'm almost done. The only thing I can ask to do is at this point from the Board of Selectmen is to have a motion in support of this project um, to show the planning board um, and the other residents in town that we believe as a board that this this is a suitable economic development activity for the town. And, you know, the project should move forward with the right conditions put on it. Um, and the rest of the stuff that I talked about as far as making the project palatable. That's it, Mr. Chairman. You're breaking up on that lab. Are you there, Doug? I am, can you hear me now? Uh, the last part of that was all broken up for me anyways. Can you hear me okay now? Um, what's that? Can you hear me now? You're breaking up, sir. Okay. I can hear you, Doug. Well, oh, okay. Ross, so, can you yes. hear him? Yeah, I, I can hear I you, Doug. Oh, okay. So I, I guess that's how I- to, You're not moving now, so. I think it's Joe, not me then. All right, so that's the only thing I, you know, if we want to, hold that off and come back to it at the end when Joe's in connection improves or whatever, that's great. But that was my, you know, my position is that we should move, we should have a motion in front of this board in support of this project um, and support the, you know, and, you know, whatever support we can provide to the planning board in their endeavor, but they're the board that has to hear it and vote on it. And, and I, you know, I also, lastly, just regarding the open meeting law, I know this has been challenging, Carl, for yourself and myself, with the rules of the road constantly changing in the last couple of weeks. And, you know, if we can get this right now, we're prohibited from meeting in person. If we can get to the point where we can meet in person, I hear people that want to have, have their two minutes at the microphone. We'd love to provide that not on zoom. So hopefully we'll get there. And by June, I believe June 29th is a continuation of the public hearing. We hopefully we'll be in a, a place to be able to offer that. Did we lose the chairman? Uh, yeah, what's he he just reappeared down below. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. Ah, there you go. Sorry about that. That was weird. All right. So you're looking for a motion? That's my proposal, sir. Ooh, Mr. Fox. Well, let me let me just add. You know, uh, as you know, I grew up in Southwick, so I've seen the a lot of changes over the years. And I, I know this property was zoned industrial years ago. It was done so for a reason because a healthy community needs to have 
residential, commercial, and industrial, if it's going to grow and maintain a stable tax rate. I mean, we're a graying community. We have people that are on fixed income. And if the tax rate continues to go up, some of these people can no longer afford to live in the town of Southwood. So I think this is a project that we have to take a serious look at, a very serious look at. I, I think that there's a lot of people confused, uh, a lot of misinformation out there. And that's why I think it's very important that the planning board uh, go over in detail and I, I would imagine Carvana is going to go in detail of what this project involves. But from what I've been told and what Mr. Moglin has, has said, and also my 10 years on the Economic Development Commission for the town of Southway, I, I would certainly make the motion uh, that the town support it at this point. Mr. Chairman, I'll second the motion. Okay. Motion was made and seconded. All those in favor? Joe D. D. I. Fox I. Doug Moglin, I. And I you know, I also want to bring up so I live next to I believe two hundred or three hundred acres that just got posted by another tobacco company or maybe the same tobacco company or now now a land development company. And I know the zoning isn't the same today, but you know, there's all these parcels in town. So I think our industrial park isn't that big. That's just probably the biggest piece of that industrial park, Mr. Mulgren, I believe. So, you know, there isn't, it, I, don't, I don't see Walmart moving next door. And what people don't realize, you know, and I, and I know when we hang up, we'll get slammed, I get it, um, because we don't have a Trader Joe's or, or the other, you know, um, decent restaurants or businesses in town, but they don't wanna come here. We, we have reached out and tried to have that discussion. And they think Agawam is the wild west and Southwood, we're not even on the map. So I, I just don't see that future development coming as they say the Riverdale Road theme. I don't see it. Is this project huge? Yeah, it's big. Is it a little scary? Sure it is. But it's, it's you know, I guess if we don't do it, we don't do it. We didn't do the trucking terminal two years ago. And then three years from now, there'll be something else that the parcel's not going away. And I hate to put Mr. Wally on the spot, but John Wally's not buying it. And John's done a great job of buying up farmland and keeping it um, as farming. But, you know, we're very fortunate to have him doing that. But there comes a time when you're just not doing that anymore. So that's that's my two cents for what it's worth. Anything else under old business? Nothing. All right. We're going to go in executive session to not reconvene. Um, oh, let's see here. Sorry. Okay, uh, we're going to executive session person, MGL chapter 30A, S21, two and three, chapter 214, section 1B, and CMR 20-03B. Regarding labor council and police chief, regarding police union negotiations, litigation, non-union personnel, collective bargaining and strategy, executive session, MGL chapter 30A, S21, two and three, Section 1B and CMR 29.031B. Uh, police union pending litigate exemption number two, moving on executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. Moving on executive session to conduct collective bargaining sessions with non union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. Move to, to go in executive session to conduct contract negotiations with non union personnel and to not reconvene an open session. And that's number two and exception three, move to go in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and to not to reconvene an open session. Move to go in executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation and that the chair declare that an open meeting may have a effect on the lit litigation body of the body and to not reconvene an open session. And then last chapter 214, section 1B, a person shall have a right against unreasonable, substantial and serious interference with their privacy. The superior court shall have jurisdiction and equity to enforce such right and the connection therewith to award damages. That's it folks, thank you. And we're off to executive session. Roll call vote, Joe. 
I'm so sorry. Roll call vote. Joe Didi, aye. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right. Thank you.